This is Barry Zelma, Zelma on Insurance, with more on what is needed to deal with construction defects, because you must understand construction, and today we'll deal with some more types of construction needed before anyone can investigate or litigate a construction defect suit. One of the most important aspects of any construction is the roof, because it keeps things out of the house or other structure. Roofing usually can be consisted of asphalt shingles, which account for close to 90% of all residential roofs. Sheet metal, cement, tiles, wood shakes or shingles, and traditional slate or ceramic tile are used across the country. For low slope roofs, polymer membranes compete with asphalt roll roofing, coal tar, and asphalt mop technologies. A historic home or home style will normally be repaired using the original material or a carefully manufactured imitation. The traditional materials of earlier times, wood shingles, slate, tile, and sheet metal are still used. You even see solar panels used as roofing materials in modern roofs. Roof rafters or trusses must support the weight of the roofing. The requirements are different depending on the roofing product used on the structure. Metal roofing is far the lightest at 40 to 60 pounds per square, a square being 100 square feet. For aluminum, and 80 to 150 pounds per square for steel. Asphalt shingles are heavier. The shingles can weigh anywhere from 240 to 400 pounds per square. Concrete and clay tiles put stress on the structure of the roof from 500 to 800 pounds per square to 900 to 1200 pounds per square. Standard thickness pushes on the roof members from 700 to 800 pounds per square, while thicker varieties weigh even more. Roof framing that can support an asphalt or wood roof may not be adequate support to support the weight of tile or slate. Failure to maintain sufficient framing for the materials used to construct a roof can cause major damage or the total failure of the roof structure. It is imperative that roofs not be installed until a competent engineer has calculated the forces involved and determined that the roof structure is sufficient to safely hold the weight of the roofing material. Failure of roofing materials, systems, or installation can cause multiple types of damage to a structure and its occupants, not the least of which is the failure to perform its designed task of keeping rainwater and wind out of the structure. When water enters a dwelling, the damages can include the following, among others. Brown water stains on paint fungal or bacterial growth that can destroy cellulose products, carpeting, paneling, and wall coverings in a dwelling and or flaking or chipping of drywall when there is sufficient water to dissolve the gypsum material or the paper holding it in place. In addition to roofing, sheet metal is a component part of most dwelling structures because they require the use of sheet metal parts to complete the structure. Sheet metal parts include galvanized flashing, a material used to stop water intrusion, gravel stops, gutters, and downspouts, roof edging, and vents. 
The sheet metal worker locates and marks reference points and using shop mathematics calculates angles and curves needed to manufacture the sheet metal parts. The sheet metal worker cuts the flat material and shapes it into a three-dimensional form using hand and power-driven tools and fabricating machines. When the parts are completed, they are assembled and riveted, welded, bolted, soldered, or otherwise bonded together. Finally, the parts are smoothed or polished and installed and anchored in place. Failure to properly install the sheet metal can result in damage to the structure and persons and property occupying the structure. Then, it is necessary to deal with the mechanical components of the building. In modern buildings, the design, installation, and control systems are integrated into one or more heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, or HVAC, systems. Engineers analyze, design, and specify the HVAC systems, and specialty mechanical contractors build and commission them. HVAC systems require constant cleaning and maintenance to operate properly. In 1992, the National Air Duct Cleaners Association adopted NADCA Standard 1992-01, Mechanical Cleaning of Non-Porous Air Conveyance System Components. The primary purpose of the standard was to define acceptable cleanliness levels within HVAC systems immediately after cleaning has been performed. Visual inspection and the NADCA vacuum test are two methods used to establish an appropriate level of cleanliness. Visual inspection is the primary method used to verify the cleanliness of an HVAC system. The NADCA vacuum test is an additional scientific method for determining cleanliness in an HVAC system. The NADCA vacuum test physically determines the amount of debris within a given surface area of an HVAC system. The NADCA requires debris of less than 1 milligram per every 100 centimeters squared. The American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers established a standard that relates closely to indoor air quality and ventilation. The National Fire Protection Association Standard 90-A sets a standard for the materials appropriate to use in the construction of ventilation systems. The Sheet Metal and Air Conditioning National Association developed numerous guidance documents and standards governing the fabrication and installation of HVAC systems. North American Insulation Manufacturers Association represents the manufacturers of flexible duct liner and duct board. That association produced several documents designed to aid in the proper fabrication, installation, and maintenance of these products. The structure's mechanical parts include, in addition to the HVAC systems, electrical and plumbing components. Because the environmental concerns and difficulties experienced with the power grid, many homeowners are considering solar or wind power for their homes and businesses. Solar power is practical and can provide an economic benefit over purchasing electricity from the power grid, although it takes many years to recover the cost, even when subsidized by governments. If you have an electricity bill less than $200 a month, you either have very low electricity needs or you have a great municipal utility that charges low rates. 
In this case, solar may be more expensive than purchasing from a utility and changing to more energy-efficient practices around your home. A south-facing roof is best to provide the optimum potential for a solar power system. Failure of any of the mechanical components of the dwelling can cause damage including fire hazards, leaking, and allowing or causing the growth of bacteria, fungi, and mold, which can result in the so-called sick building syndrome and the growth of Legionnaire's disease. Problems with mechanical components can make living in the dwelling difficult if not impossible. Then we have to deal with insulation. The United States Department of Energy suggests that all homes should be insulated. They post a diagram that indicates location in the home that needs insulation. Some new homes are built using metal frames instead of wood. The Department of Energy recommends normal methods of insulation for wood frame houses are usually insufficient for metal framed houses. Sufficient insulation is effective and practical since it reduces the cost to heat or cool the structure. The Department of Energy suggests that a metal framed house include insulation in all unfinished attic spaces between and over the floor joists to seal off living spaces below, attic access doors, finished attic rooms with or without dormers, between the studs of D walls, between the studs and rafters of exterior walls on the roof, ceilings and cold spaces above, joist space to reduce airflow, all exterior walls, including walls between living spaces and unheated garages, shed roofs, or storage areas, foundation walls above ground level, and foundation walls in heated basements, full wall either interior or exterior. Insulation is required for floors above cold spaces, such as vented crawl spaces and unheated garages, and any portion of the floor in a room that is cantilevered beyond the exterior wall below, slab floors built directly on the ground need insulation as an alternative to floor insulation, foundation walls of unvented crawl spaces and extend insulation into joint space to reduce airflow. We must also insulate band joists and replacement or storm windows, and caulk and seal around all windows. Some types of insulation include blanket insulation, which takes the form of bats or rolls. They are flexible products made from mineral fibers. Continuous rolls can be hand cut and trimmed to fit. They are available with or without vapor retarded facings. Loose fill insulation is blown into a building's cavities using loose fibers or fiber pellets that are injected into the structure's openings and attics using special air-powered equipment. Polyurethane foam insulation can be applied by a professional applicator using special equipment to meter, mix, and spray it in place. Rigid insulation is made from fibrous materials or plastic foams. It is pressed or extruded into board-like forms and molded as coverings for pipes and ducts. Reflective insulation systems are fabricated from aluminum foils with a variety of backings such as craft paper, plastic film, polyurethane bubbles, or cardboard. It has been implicated as a hazard in fire situations by allowing fires to spread along the craft paper lining. Failure of insulation can increase the cost of heating and cooling the property, and if improperly installed, allows release of insulation fibers that might be dangerous to the occupants. 
Windows and glass are important to every structure since no one wants to be imprisoned in their home. The term glass includes everything from window glass to insulating glass, obscure glass, mirrors and plate glass, whether used as a structural material or in windows and doors. Glass is most commonly used in windows and doors, which, depending on the size and style of the house, can represent between 4 and 10 percent of the total construction bu budget of a new home. Some windows are made from vinyl. Vinyl windows are primarily made of polyvinyl chloride, or PVC. PVC has the distinct advantage of being a poor conductor of cold and heat, so it makes an extremely energy-efficient window. Vinyl windows also are extremely durable because vinyl is corrosion-resistant and does not flake, chip, peel, rust, rot, blister, or swell. Features of this type of window generally include welded frames and sashes, which prevent air and water infiltration. All vinyl windows have double-pane glass with insulating air between the two panes of glass. Then there are wood frame windows, steel windows, aluminum frame windows, aluminum clad wood windows, and vinyl clad wood windows. This video was adapted from my book, Construction Defects and Insurance, Volume 1, which is the first of an eight-part treatise, Construction Defects and Insurance, available as both Kindle books and as paperbacks from Amazon.com. If you found this video to be of interest or useful to you, please convey it to your colleagues. It's free. And please also subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Rumble channel, my blog, and to my account at Substack so that you can be advised of future videos and future blog postings. Thank you for your attention.